Alright, what's up guys? This is going to be a RCS tutorial for CSGO, which is Recoil Control System. And it's basically just going to take it from Recoil and Counter-Strike being like this. Alright, and it's going to completely mitigate it when you inject it. Shit. Um, when you inject it, it's going to work like that. Alright, so let's get into it. First thing we're going to do is open up Visual Studio. And you're going to create a new project, DLL, right, new, name it whatever you'd like to. And when it opens up, it's going to have this template, and we're going to remove this top bit that has pre-compiled headers, go up to properties, C, C++, pre-compiled headers, double click there to disable it. And we're all left with this. We're going to have to include Windows.h since it needs some of this stuff. And we'll just do a little cleanup right here since it's ugly from default. Right, right. Alrighty. And the only thing we're going to need here is this process attached. So we're going to switch this to an if statement and empty this out. And if it's attached, we're going to create a thread that calls this function, hack thread. We're gonna have to pass our H module. Right, and then we're done in here. And then we are going to create this thread, or this function, I mean, which is an int when API function called hack thread. And it's gonna take our H module. And, right, and at the end it's gonna return zero. We're going to close our handle, H module and free library and exit thread. And what this allows us to do is uninject our DLL and test it and whatnot over and over again um, by clicking a key that we want. So um, in here we'll have our hack stuff. Out here we'll have our vectory class, our offsets, and our settings. Um, in here we'll have our, our data. We'll have our hack loop, and that's it. So right up here, we'll just create a simple vectory class real quick, because we're going to need that. Um, stru struct, I can type, vectory, and that's just going to be float xyz. Um, for our settings, we're going to have a uint pointer t exit key, which is just going to be set to the key underscore escape. So that's going to be our exit key for now. And that will allow us in our hack loop to do if not get a async key state. Exit key. Um, no, 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 no. It's going to be a while. So we're going to loop while we're not clicking our exit key. So, yep, that's going to be our hack stuff in here. Hack stuff. Right. Um, up here, we're going to have our data. We're going to have our like client module, engine module, um, local player pointer, uh, view angles pointer, shots fired pointer, aim punch. Pointer. Um, up here we're going to have our offsets for our local player, um, we're going to have offsets for our client state, uh, view angles, shots fired, and aim punch angle. Right. So in here, first thing we're going to need, no, first we'll set up our offsets. Alright, so the way you find these is just through haze dumper, which is super easy. Um, there's also a guided hacking dumper. But since Haze Dumper post pushes all these to this repo, it's super easy to just grab them real quick. Um, so first we're going to need uint pointer t vw local player. Equal, and that's going to be it's going to be right here. All right. uint pointer t um, vw client state. And that's up here. And then we're going to need uint pointer t gw client state underscore view angles. And that's going to be down here. And then we're going to need uint pointer t m underscore i shots are fired. If I can type right here. Punch 
each angle, and it's going to be right here. So that's all of our offsets. So now that we have our offsets and our class set up and our loop set up, we can start to do stuff. So our client module, that's going to get the location of the client panorama DLL. So we can add our offsets to that and get like our player pointer and our health and stuff. Um, so that is just going to be a uint pointer t client module equals uint pointer t casted um, get module handle and then like I said, client underscore panorama dot dll throw an l in there because we're not a multi byte engine engine module is the exact same except we use um, engine.dll instead. Right. Um, all right, so local player pointer now is going to be a local player equals, it's a dereference uint pointer t pointer at client module plus dw local player. And that gives us our local player object. And then we need our view angles, which is a vector three pointer. View angles equals a vector three pointer. And this is at dereference you want pointer t um, dw client state. No, engine module plus dw client state plus dw client state view angles ready all right so now that gives us our view angles pointer which is again our our view angles in game so like left right up down um, and we can show that off here by just going view angles equals zero 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 so that should freeze our view angles in one spot we'll just build it real quick and that's going to be right here so we'll grab that no, oops, add files, boom, boom. And then we'll just inject this real quick. And our view angles are now frozen. You see I, I'm spamming my mouse in a circle, but it just won't let me move anything. All right, so we'll uninject that real quick. And that's what our view angles does. All right, so now we need our shots fired pointer. My shots fired equals, it's gonna be pretty much the same, except this one's gonna be a little bit easier. This one's just our local player plus DW, no, M underscore I shots fired. And then this one's gonna be the exact same as above. So it's M punch angle equals deck three pointer, um, local player plus M underscore M punch angle. Right, so now that we have all of our um, data, we can start to use it. And I shots fired returns the amount of shots fired since you start clicking to when you let go. So one, one two, one two, one two, one, 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 one two, one two, three. Anyways, you get the idea. And aim punch angle is where the crosshair currently is. So if I start shooting here, um, aim punch angle is gonna be the angle where the crosshair is. Because that is one half exactly the distance of where the bullet will land. So we're gonna need to do some math in there super hard, just times two. Um, and it's gonna be the crosshair angle, and then we'll mitigate that from our view angles, and it will make our bullets land right where we want. So as you can see, when I hold down the button, the crosshair will always be halfway in between where I started shooting and where the bullet lands, if you watch. So it's going to be halfway in the middle the whole time. Um, so that's why it's super easy to do a recoil control, because you just multiply it by two. So what we're going to do here is, if we're firing, we're going to do calc our RCS, normalize, and then set. And then if we're not shooting, we're going to fix it. Um, so that we can like start and stop shooting and do some other stuff um, And that makes it awesome. So if firing so firing since we have eye shots fired We're just gonna do if eye shots fired is greater than one super easy because we still want to be able to like tap fire like dudes from super far away um, Yeah, and if we make it one uh, it only starts going if we've shot two bullets um Righty, and since when we fix it, it's gonna still store that first shot, so it's not gonna matter. Um, calc RCS. So our RCS calculation is super simple. It's just um, first of all, we're gonna need a vector three to hold our old punch, and we're just gonna set that to a blank 
table. And then in here, we're going to need a vector 3 um, punch angle, which is going to be our aim punch angle dereference times 2, like I said earlier, because it's halfway up. Um, and then that's going to be there. And then our calculation is just going to be a new vector 3 called new angle. It's going to be our view angles plus our old punch minus our punch angle. So our current one. And then we're going to have to normalize it and set it and fix it. And as you see, I tried to use these operators here. Um, to multiply this times 2 and add these vectors together. But since we created this class, it actually doesn't know how to handle it. So you'd think if you're just multiplying a vector times another vector, it'd work. But like, imagine if I add like a boolean, what's up in here? Um, it's not going to know how to multiply a boolean. Like, that just doesn't make sense. So we have to tell it what to do. So we're going to write these operators, uh, these overflows. They're called operator overloads, or overflows, overload, I don't know. Um, anyways, so we're going to need plus. So we're going to want to add a vector 3, um, and we're going to want to do minus a vector 3, and we're going to want to do times a float, since we used float uh, for this one, or an integer, but we'll, we'll want to float. So all we have to do is, basically it takes, tells you what it's uh, going to be on the right side of the operator, what's on the left side of the operator, and it returns it this to our object. And we could do that by going like vec3 temp temp.x equals x plus d.x, temp.y equals y plus d.y, temp.z equals z plus d.z, and then returning temp. But an easier way to do that is just by returning the initializer values, so just x plus d.x, y plus d.y, z plus d.z. Um, so we don't need any of this stuff. And for subtract, it's identical, except these are subtracts instead. And for this one, it's even easier. It's x return x times d, y times d, z times d. Great. All right, so now we're able to handle these multiplications, addition, subtractions. Normalize. So normalize is going to make it so that our cheat always works and we don't get banned at the same time because in CSGO the angles work like 0 to 180 degrees and 0 to negative 180 degrees. It's not 0 to 360, 0 to 180, 0 to negative 180. Uh, so we need to make sure that we're always in that range and it's also 0, 89, negative 89 to 89. So if we're like negative 100 we'd be like upside down and we don't want that because you're going to get banned. So we're going to need a function in our vector3 class called normalize. And that is just going to be a void function. Um, and what it does is while our y, which our y is actually left and right in this game for some reason. Um, I don't like that, but it's whatever. It's how it works, so we're going to have to follow that. And so while our y is less than negative 180, we're going to add y plus equals 360. And, nope, oh, that's wrong, yep. Um, while our y is greater than 180, y minus equals 360. If our x is greater than 89, x equals 89. If x is less than minus 89, x equals minus 89. And that's how our normalized function works, super simple. And then all we're going to do there is call that to normalize our new angle. Right. So after that, all we're going to have to do is simply set our view angles to our new angle. And that's pretty much it. But first, we're going to have to set our um, old punch to our punch angle to keep that updated and keep everything working smoothly. And then after we do that, that's going to be it. So we can build and compile this. And since I already added it here when I showed you earlier, you can do that, or if you haven't added it yet, you can do that. And once we inject it, it's going to work perfectly. Super cool, super easy. It's like 90 lines of code with comments and weird spacing. Like, you can just make all this on one line and whatnot, however you'd like. Um, and it's super, super small and really easy to understand. And you've learned operator overloads, class functions, 
Um, and if you've never done anything with hex before, it's super easy. Or if you especially haven't done anything with view angles, because view angles are super important when you're making an aimbot. Um, here you go. This is going to be super helpful for you. Hopefully you enjoyed. Um, see you if I do another tutorial.